Over here? You coming over here? No, me? Really? <laughs> okay. All right. I've already been put to work here. <laughs> now, now let's see. What do we have here? All right. What am I trying to do? No, no, no. <laughs> All right. How much? Okay. Okay. I'm trying to. <laughs> Okay, now show me how to do this. Show me how to do this. <laughs> I'm Medicine Hunter Chris Gillum, calling out to you members of the American Botanical Council, and I'm having trouble harvesting ashwagandha. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm in a field of ashwagandha in India with a bunch of women who know a lot more about harvesting than I do. <laughs> If I were doing this for a living by weight, I would not make any money at all. Uh, this is ashwagandha, Withania somnifera. Ashwa means horse, ganda means smell, because some people think that the root smells a little bit like a horse. Uh, Withania somnifera, which is the botanical name of this particular plant. Uh, somnifera uh, means to sleep, because ashwagandha helps you to sleep. In addition to being an adaptogen, it's also known as a rasayan. Rasayan means life extender. So uh, this is anti-inflammatory. It promotes endurance, energy, stamina. It enhances mental function. And I'm just like the laughing stock of the community here because my harvesting <laughs> skills are very, very poor. <laughs> so to all you members of the American Botanical Council, this is Chris Killam saying, there's nothing like being in the field, and being in a field of ashwagandha is an amazing experience. Plants usually tell you when they're ready to be harvested. Uh, grains will achieve a certain size, apples will turn a certain color, in the case of ashwagandha, it starts to yellow, and uh, when that happens, that's really the commencement of the harvest season. This is a beautiful green plant, but we see now a lot of these leaves are yellowing. So the plant tells you when it's ready. Uh, these seeds were sown in August. Harvest is typically end of February, early March, but the plant itself, will say, okay, I'm ready to be harvested now. And that's visually, by looking at it, you see it's yellowing. So here we've got some uh, freshly harvested root. You can see they're all different sizes. Like this is a great big fatty by comparison with some of these little skinny guys. And according to uh, Kartiki Baldwa, who runs this operation, only the larger, thicker uh, roots will be used. And these little guys will go to market to be sold to other entities. Thank you. So it's all handwork digging it out with <coughs> one of these babies. Totally effective. Uh, you can't really mechanize this kind of crop. Uh, it was, now these seeds were sown in August and typically the harvest is end of February, early March. And you can see this soil is very dry. In fact, 
It has no moisture at all, really. Ashwagandha doesn't favor moisture. Uh, a good hard rain or two would ruin this crop. So, unlike most plants, it really doesn't get watered. I have never held in my hands a bunch of ashwagandha. I mean, I've used ashwagandha, I've you know, seen it around, but I've never actually held a bucket of freshly harvested ashwagandha. This is really one of the great medicinal plants in the world. Uh, it's phenomenal for relieving stress. It has anti-inflammatory properties. It's also called uh, an immune modulator. If your immune function is low, it helps to bring it up. If your immune function is too high, it helps to bring it down, keep it in that healthy mid-range. So it's a remarkable plant, and the sages who really developed Ayurveda over 5,000 years ago regard this as the king of herbs. So of all the plants in the 5,000 year old system of Ayurveda, which is a health system that involves herbs and foods and yoga and therapies of different kinds, this is the number one herb, ashwagandha, withania somnifera. This is the king of herbs. Bye now.